There were a number of elements that came together to establish an archive. First and foremost is my lifelong love of music, which was developed from playing piano, from studying musical theory, composition and arrangements. This combined with a enduring commitment to Judaism led to my meeting a number of very talented composers who, among other things, expressed musical themes inspired by the American Jewish experience. At first, my expectations were, you know, that it'll be interesting, I'll learn something. And then once I got involved, wow, my expectations became much greater. We can actually change the world of what is known to be music of a Jewish background. The Milken Archive comprises a diverse range of music, one that encompasses secular and sacred music of many different kinds. It includes art music like symphonies, string quartets, concertos, and art songs, popular and folk-oriented music such as Yiddish radio and labor songs, and it also includes a number of liturgical masterpieces. And one of the most important of those is Hermann Berlinski's Avodat Shabbat. Herman Berlinski was a preeminent artist who created works of enduring importance to the Jewish experience, the greatest of which the archive was able to recreate when we recorded his masterpiece, Avodat Shabbat, in April 2000 in Berlin with the Berlin Radio Symphony Orchestra. So connected to the world of Jewish music, the way he combined the English and the Hebrew, the way he used the soloists, I mean, a very special experience for all of us. What it's done for me is it's made me reevaluate so much of what it is to be Jewish. He undoubtedly would have had a great career as a composer and performer in Germany. He was a great organist as well. He was exiled from Germany because of the Nazi regime. To be part of the process that brought Berlinski back to Germany for the first time since 1933, to be seated next to the composer as he listened to his magnum opus being played as he had conceived it, describes one of the most moving experiences of brilliance and reconciliation of faith and history in my life. Herman had, had discovered a language that I thought so beautifully expressed the service. It was really very striking music. Four months later, I received a handwritten letter from Berlinski. Quote, a score is nothing but paper. It is silent and unlike painting, does not reveal itself by just looking at it. A recording, however, brings the work to the attention of those who eventually may want to perform it, or at least will have an opinion about it. This, to a living composer, means the possibility of survival, and future generations will be thankful to the Milken Archive for preserving and safeguarding our artistic legacy. Sadly, Herman Berlinski died not long after writing me that letter. His music lives on. Jewish music is a very big world, so the Milken Archive decided to focus its efforts specifically on the American Jewish experience. The primary motive for that was the belief that America has provided the environment in which Jews have achieved many of their most significant artistic achievements and also a place where they have enjoyed a largely unrestricted freedom to express Jewish identity and Jewish themes in their work. David Stock, a composer from Pittsburgh who achieved some mainstream success, is one such artist. David Stock wrote this piece called A Little Miracle. It's an amalgam of historical accounts. 
and it takes place in an Eastern European city. I think of it maybe as the Warsaw Ghetto. And her mother and her husband are shot dead. She gets very ill, feverish, hallucinating. And in her hallucination, she remembers the song that her mother sang to her. And she feels that she's saved by this song, by this memory. Mein Kind, mein schöne kleine Mädele. One composer, the Milken Archive, that I've been particularly drawn to is David Amram. He is someone who's just had such a diverse range of musical experiences, from being the first ever composer in residence at the New York Philharmonic with Leonard Bernstein, to being a jazz French horn player and playing with many of the jazz greats. He could tell you stories about Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie telling him that he needed to go learn more about Jewish music to understand more about who he was. Yet he has such a perspective as someone who has spent his life studying and immersing himself, oftentimes in the music of other cultures, but he also has a profound and solid sense of his own Jewish identity. With Jewish music, you could say it's a reflection of the diversity, the individuality, and the commonality of music that comes from an unwritten history. Because even though we've written so much, we are people of the book, the music reflects that which is not written in the book, but which we carry with us. The Milken Archive is a remarkable achievement, and now that the archive is available so easily online, this is going to be a source of study and enlightenment, I think, pretty much forever. And it's fantastic, too, that the University of California has now become a partner. The new Lowell Milken Center for Music of American Jewish Experience at UCLA will help us fulfill our commitment to education, to develop educational materials, to fund research projects, and to develop the next generation of scholars who can really help carry the field of Jewish music studies forward. We see the center benefiting UCLA students on many different levels. One level for undergraduates is to give them opportunities as we develop various programs to perform music or write music and are able to help them perform their newly written compositions, to record these compositions, something we're uniquely situated to do at the UCLA Herb Alpert School of Music. I see the future of the new center to be a way to establish a priority of studying music, of American Jewish experience. I always envisioned that the archive would cultivate and nourish musicians and enthusiasts of this richly varied repertoire for generations to come. I believe the center has the potential to elevate the work at the archive and achieve that goal to make the archive a living project.